Today, we're going to build and train our own chatbot from scratch, just like this one. I'll show you step by step how to do this for free and add it to your own website. So make sure you watch to the end so you don't miss any steps. Start by typing in chatling.tech in the browser or find the link in the description below. Now select get started for free, create your account and no credit card is required. So let's create our first chatbot. We'll start from scratch and we'll enter in the name of our bot. I'll call it my chatbot and then click create. In the left hand panel, you can now click on the builder. Okay, so first let's get familiar with the tools. This is the blank canvas where we'll build our chatbot. And then over here we have our starting point where the conversation will begin. On the sidebar, you can see that the first icon is for blocks and we'll use these blocks to create the flow of the conversation between the user and the bot. The next icon is for variables. Variables give you the ability to store information such as customer input. This will allow you to reuse the information later in the conversation as well as save the info as a lead. Here is the AI configuration. And this allows you to modify how the AI responds. So if we click on the instructions, we're able to provide instruction to the AI on how we would like it to respond. You can click on the examples over here to get a few ideas. Over here we have the knowledge base and we'll get back to this a little bit later in the video. I'll show you how to import your company info for the chatbot to use as a knowledge base to respond from. And finally, we have settings. Over here, you can add in a business name. And this is important as it will restrict the chatbot from answering questions that are unrelated to your business. Okay, so first let's add in a block and we're going to click on a text message and just drag it into our flow over here. Click on it to add in a welcome message. Welcome to the... Um, here to answer your questions. Okay, next we need to connect the starting point to this. So we're gonna simply click over here, drag it to our welcome message. Now let's add in another text block and I'll just drop it in over here. We want to capture the customer's details right in the beginning so that we get the lead. Please enter your details get started okay so now let's add in our contact form so we'll go over to the blocks and we can add the form in and we'll just place it right underneath the section over here click on the form and add in the first field I'll call this one name to save the user as a lead you need to store the input as a variable so I'll use the contact name variable and I'll add in a second field and I'll call this one email. We'll add contact email over there. Now when the user fills this out, the lead will be captured and you'll be able to find it in the contacts and leads page in the dashboard. Okay, so here are my two fields and the next step is to connect this group with this one over here so that it creates the flow. So you'll click on the dot and you simply connect it like that. Just gonna hold this in and drag it so that it looks like that, perfect. Next, we'll add another text block in to greet the user by their name. So we'll drag that in over here. And you can do this by inserting the variable that we used in our form. So I'll start by saying hi, and then I'll open up a curly bracket and I'll just search for the contact name. How can I assist you? Now make sure that you connect this up. So we'll just click and connect it like that. So just to recap, we, we're starting our conversation from over here. When the user enters the chatbot, they're welcomed. Then they're asked to fill in their details to get started. The user types in their details. It gets captured to the system and then we can reuse the details that we captured here to address them by name. So it's going to be, hi, Michelle, how can I assist you? 
So the next step is we now need to capture the user's question and then save it as a variable. So we're going to go over here and to do that, we'll use a capture response and we'll drag through this text box, text box over here. Like always, we'll add in a connection and we'll connect it up like that. And you can always just move your boxes around over there and just make it a little bit neater. And you can also right click on a box and delete a group. You can delete a connection as well by just right clicking and deleting it from here. Now click on the block to open the editor. And here we're going to create a new variable to save the user's question. I'll name my variable user underscore question and then click create. You have a few additional fields to make the input required and you can also add a minimum or maximum character input. Next, we need to add in a block which will enable the AI to answer the user's question. So open the block menu and you can select the AI response block. Drop it in just under the user's question. Click on the block to customize the response and you can now decide on the response source. So if you select knowledge base, the AI will generate an answer based off the information that you provide. We don't have a data source yet, but we'll create one together in just a moment. If you select the AI model, the AI will answer based off of its pre-trained data and won't use the knowledge base. For example, you could ask it to give you a personalized greeting using the customer's name. We'll use the knowledge base as our source and then we need to answer the question, the user input. So over here, we'll add the user question variable. Select it in. Next, you can choose to store the user's response as another variable. However, we don't need it for this tutorial, so I'll skip it. In the stream option, if you enable it, it will stream the user's response as it's being generated, and this will result in a faster response. You can also set path not found. However, this can't be set if you have stream option enabled. Enabling this allows you to customize the response that the bot should take if it can't find an answer to the question being asked. And finally, you can set the AI model that you would like to use as well as selecting the language and the AI temperature. Okay, so don't forget, we still need to add in our data source for the chatbot to work correctly. Lastly, we need to connect up this block to its own group. This will form a loop, which will allow the user to ask another question after each AI response. Okay, so you can test out your bot from over here. You can preview what you've built, but let's click save and then head on over to our knowledge base. So we're going to exit the chat bot and we're going to go to the knowledge base builder. Over here, we can add in our data source. So we're going to add new. And this is one of the things that I really love about chatting is it gives you a lot of options to be able to uh, train your bot. So we can simply use the URL of our website. So I can add that in over there. I can go to the advanced settings and I have advanced features where I can exclude by class or ID, but I'm also going to exclude the header and the footer. You could choose to add the URL of your sitemap, which I think would work really well in this instance and just add that in over there. And you could also add in by URL list. You can manually select the URLs that you'd like to use for your knowledge base and simply paste them in individually over here. You can add by text. And you even have the option to create your own FAQ. And then this is an option that I really love where you can add your own company documents in via PDF, text or Word documents. So once you're ready, click next and Chatlin will simply scan your website or documents and start pulling your information through to the knowledge base. Okay, so here are the results of all of the pages that are brought through from the website and I can simply also go through the list and delete anything that I don't want. If you're happy with your list, just go ahead and submit it into your knowledge base. And just like that, it's done. Right, so let's go on to the next step and we'll begin to customize our widget. And this will change the way that the chatbot looks. So click on customize. Okay, so change the color of your chatbot with the color slider over here. And you can simply slide it across and choose your color. Adjust the width of your chatbot for desktop from over here. 
switch the position of your chatbot to the left or the right of the screen. You can update the icon of the bot. You could even upload your logo here and adjust the rounded corners. And you can change the chat icon from over here. Over here we have the text. I can change this perhaps to my business name. There are quite a few nifty settings in the configuration such as hiding the chatbot branding. And then this is probably one of the best settings for me personally. You can show the sources of the information provided by the AI. For instance, the AI has provided shipping info and referenced the tracking link to the user. It can also provide links to the documents that were uploaded to the knowledge base. So the customization for me is really top notch. Once you're done with your configuration, simply click save. And the next step is to add it to our website. So I'm going to click over here, add to website. You can add your chatbot to any website. In this tutorial, I'll add the chatbot to my WordPress site via the theme file. If you're using Elementor, you can skip ahead and I'll show you how to add the chatbot via Elementor. Okay, so let's start by copying the code over here and going over to the dashboard of your WordPress site. Go to Appearance and then go to Theme File. Click on the Understand. Next, I'd like you to go over to the right-hand side and click on the header.php file. In the file, I would like you to find this section over here, which is the head. And before the closing tag, you're simply going to paste in the code that we just copied right over here. So here it is. There's my script. There's my closing head file and I can simply update my file. Now let's take a look at the website and here I have my chatbot working over here. I have an error link over here where it just says that we need to make our chatbot active. So I'll go back into my builder here and we're going to simply activate the chatbot. So here we have the status is in draft and we want to click on publish if I go back to my website and refresh, let's type in my name and email address. And as you can see, it's working great. It's using my name and it's asking how we can assist. So let's test it out. And as you can see, the chatbot is working great. Okay, so if you're using Elementor, you can click on Elementor and then go to uh, custom code. Now add new custom code. And we just wanna add a title. So we'll call this chatting chatbot. And we would like to add it in our head. Make sure that you've got your code copied over here and paste it in. Hit publish and you can add a condition. What's nice about adding it through Elementor is let's say that you want, don't want it to show on all pages. You can simply click add a condition and exclude it from a certain part of your website. So I'm just going to leave that out and I'm going to have a display on my entire site. So let's click on save and close and you can select update. Let's take a look and here is our chatbot added right here. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.